ಶೇಷಾಪಹಂಸಿ ತುಷ್ಟು ಕಾಮಾನುಭೀಷ್ಠಾನ್ ತಾಮಶ್ರಯತಾಶ್ರಯತಾಶ್ರಯತಾಶ್ರಯತಾ ವಿಶ್ವೇಶ್ವರಿ ಪರಿಪಾಶಿ ವಿಶ್ವ ವಿಶ್ವಾತ್ಮಿಕಾಧಾರಯಶೀತಿ ವಿಶ್ವ ವಿಶ್ವೇಶು ಬಂದ್ಯಾತಿ ಭವಂತಿ ವಿಶ್ವಾಶ್ರಯ ಈ ವಕ್ತಿ ನಮ್ರ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಮೀ ಓ ಮದರ್ ವೆನ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ಡ್ ಯು ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯ್ ಆಲ್ ಇಲ್ನೆಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಸೀಸ್ ಬಟ್ ವೆನ್ ರಾತ್ಫುಲ್ ಯು ಫ್ರಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ all the desires long for no calamity befalls men who take refuge in you they verily become a glorified in the world and a source of refuge to all who have sought you in life o queen of the universe <coughs> you protect the universe as the self of the universe you support it you are the goddess what did to be adored by the lord of universe those who bow in devotion to you they themselves become the refuge of the universe om peace 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 be unto us all so today our topic is uh, is my mother really black <laughs> now this is a very great philosophical question sri ramakrishna worshiped the divine mother in the form of mother kali and we find that mystics are practicing this type of spiritual discipline and praying and crying and weeping to the divine mother not recently it is it goes back to time beyond even vedic time it is pre vedic period also we find that the worship of the mother goes on we see this universe we are born out of ma- ma- mother womb so this whole universe it comes out of the womb of the cosmic mother and that is called the divine mother and that mother is the source of everything she is the nurturing reality she is the ultimate support or ultimate resting place so the sri ramakrishna talked about this point because all, all in different parts in the gospel of ramakrishna and emphasis has been given that what is the nature of the divine mother normally it is worshiped in the you will see that we will worship here soon on the 19th you can you have seen who have observed it is a mother's form but it's a complexion is dark complexion and very soothing pleasing face but the complexion is dark why it is that darkness is is she dark and we are worshiping a dark goddess komalakanta mystic saint expressed his experience about this mother of the universe in this beautiful song which is wonderful composition of him it has been sung so many times by swami vivekananda sri ram krishna himself is my mother really black mother kali is black it is like that i think in madonna the uh, black madonna that is also worship so does it mean that what is the significance of that darkness behind is a question and ramakrishna worshiped this mother who is the mother of the universe we have just referred the divine mother who gave birth to this entire cosmos 
both, both micro and macrocosm contents in her room and beyond. And Ramakrishna worshipped and he at Dakshineshwar and he referred to her as Adya Shakti or the primal energy. And this has been not with Sri Ramakrishna beginning as he just mentioned. It is going on from prehistoric time. It goes to the Vedic and pre-Vedic times. Barely um, in Das Valley um, settlers, they also have been seen that they have worshipped this mother, mother of the universe in different way. Mother worship was so prevalent. Worshipped in the in her an iconic form, like some ring stones, some of very suggestive nature. And it was discovered at the Mahindradaro and Harappan civilization when it is dug. It can be described with great deal of justification that there was a symbolic worship meditation of the Divine Mother, Divine Mother as Goddess of the Universe. And this tradition went on and on and on. And then mother became very sweet and loving to the mystics. Is a frightening mother with sword in hand and all the terrible things mother does, chopping the head uh, of the demons and its violent, virulent form. But actually this violent form has disappeared from the mind of the mystics. They have made it as a darling, dear mother who is always uh, so close and takes care of everything and is like your own daughter sometimes or your own mother. Sri Ramakrishna, when he talks about this song, is the song goes on, Shama Ma Ki Amar Kalore. That means Ma, this mother, is that mother really dark or black? And the naked one, Kalarupe Digambari, is he, she, she is all embracing because how much big cloth is necessary? If you give a cloth to the Divine Mother, where will you get a cloth? The whole universe in your womb, this cosmos, this infinite stars and galaxies and all the creation, micro and macro, if it comes out of her womb, then how big is she? And that's why symbolically it says she's naked. That is space. Space is her dress. So, Kalo Rupi Digambari. This is a black, dark mother. But beauty, Ridhipaddo Koreyalo. Hmm? My God. When it's, she is in the heart, he shines with the brilliance of all light and experience of that bliss and joy. Apparently looks dark, but when meditated in the heart, she then illumines the heart. All the darkness of the heart is gone. It is a philosophically conflicting idea as it were. Somebody was telling me in Buddhism, he had, uh, that person has studied Buddhism very well. He said that, yes, there is some element of this before illumination. I do not know how is that, but we can think a little bit of it, how illumination, this light presupposes this darkness. Actually what happens, to my little understanding, I think this way, when you see that Sri Ramakrishna is touching Naren, and you feel that this whole world of appearance, which is bright, brilliant, no? It just started vanishing into some void. And that void went into something which is incomprehensible. And then it lost into that incomprehensible truth. And he didn't have it that time, but in when later time Ramakrishna used to go. When this feasible universe vanishes, probably there comes a concept of some, not 
seeing anything, not knowing anything. An intermediate gap, it is like a passing. You pass through a gate from which you see this visible universe and then when you cross this visible universe and you enter into some realm, this universe is gone. Just imagine when someone uh, falls, uh, uh, being fainted or losing outer consciousness. Oh, I, I didn't see anything. I, my, my head was reeling and he fell down. So where is the presence of anything concrete there? So that situation comes when one spiritual seeker moves into the path of spirituality by practice. This apparent universe appears, which is so real, it becomes absent. And that absence is the level where people think that it is dark. And that we are viewing that darkness symbolically in the image of Mother. And when, even in Vedantic art perspective, if we talk about Atman and Brahman, eh, it's covered by Maya. And Maya's project, projection is there. So, you know, philosophically, if we think that way, we are in the projection side. And if you go from projection to the source, what happens? You reign, reach a point where there is a dark ignorance. We call the subtler level of mind moving, moving, moving into the point. There is some point of darkness. So this probably is the thing which Buddhism also talks about. I have no understanding, but I was pleased to know that they also think the way. But here, Kamala Kanto, Ramakrishna is singing that song. Swami Vivekananda sang for Ramakrishna. Then he sang, people say that my mother is black or dark, but my mind does not say so. Then what is her form? Sometimes she is white, sometimes she is yellow, sometimes she is, she is blue. Anyway, so she takes different colors. And I do not know what is mother. And I think a mother like that, and my life is passing away. Just understanding mother, there is no end of understanding. I think here is also another point. You know, yogis, <clears throat> those who meditate in the chakra meditation, they have different plexus and they have different colors in different levels. So here, this mystic Kamala Kantu sings that mother is sometimes without any color, it is bright, light. And sometimes it is yellow, sometimes it is blue. And as viewed from different points, different at distance. I did not know before. Now Kamala Kantu says, I did not know that she has so many colors. But it is now again Ahijani. I did not knew it before. Before this experience, that Kamoni Jananni, how is our mother? And thinking thus, my life went on in this search. Sometimes she is Purusha, sometimes she is Prakriti, sometimes she is void. Beautiful. You see the whole creation, according to Shankar philosophy, there is a Purusha and Prakriti, no? So Purusha, and sometimes she is Purusha, sometimes she is consciousness absolute, sometimes she is Prakriti. This 24 cosmic principle in which we live, eat, sleep, we have our food, we have our living and dying and experiencing of all these things. So, Kakhano Purusha, sometimes he is the Purusha, not man, you can say man also. Sometimes she is woman. Prakriti, if you simple translation. Or if you can take the philosophical meaning that sometimes she is the consciousness and sometimes she is the 24 principles and sometimes she is devoid of everything. Then she is what she is. Vedanta will say it is Brahman. And Mair Ibhavu Bhavye thinking of this type of mother, mother's characteristic. Sahoje pagolo holoreko. Kamala Kantu become mad. 
he could not find out then what is mother you cannot say this you cannot say that you can say this that 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 and beyond you cannot say anything this is the explanation in the simple song these are mystics they they express such high philosophy in such a simple language but such a profound depth that you can sing this song and really make a meditation of your own uh, you have sung heard this song many times but as i love to sing a few lines so i'll sing it shama ma ki amar kalo re shama ma ki amar kalo kalo rupe digambari ridi pad kare alo re shama ma ki amar kalo loke bole kali kalo amar mon to bole na kalo re shama ma ki amar kalo kakhono purush kakhono prakriti kakhono shunno rupare mayere bhav bhaviye kamala kanto e bhav bhaviye kamala kanto sahaje pagolo holo re shama ma ki amar kalo my mother is my mother black she is the one without any cloth in her body because she is so big digambari symbolically we worship that but she is not black she illumines the lotus of your heart and it brightens your understanding and experience that people talk that mother is black but my mind does not say so because i have experienced my mind says i have seen she is full of light and illumination and she takes also so many colors and forms in this creation and i didn't know it before how is mother and i'm thinking of mother what is mother who is mother and i think she is the purusha consciousness she is the prakriti that 24 principles sometimes she is of not of any form and thinking all these aspects i have become mad so this is the song which we referred today and there is corresponding sri ramakrishna talks about this in different ways i will go to that later on it says that another song is there which sri ramakrishna liked how is mother kali the main main question is they are made, is my mother black then what is she that is the question so we find that this mother worshipers have given so much of food nurturing food for us here another song ramakrishna said see see in the in the womb of mother the whole universe is there and and it is saying that even the six systems of philosophy does not get a clue of it what is this mother that song is also beautiful sri ram you know sang many times and the gospel will find repeatedly ke jane kali kemon eh shoro darshane na paaye darshan who is there that can understand what mother kali is even the six philosophies darshans are powerless to reveal her it is she the scripture says that is the inner self of the yogi who in self discovers all his joy see that of her own sweet will inhabits every living thing the macrocosm and the microcosm rest in the mother's womb now do you see how vast it is in the muladhara the base chakra the yogi meditates on her and in sahasra who but shiva has beheld her 
as she really is. Within the lotus wilderness, she sports beside her mate, the swan, Shiva, the absolute. When man aspires to understand her, Ram Prasad must smile. To think of knowing her, he says, is quite as laughable as to imagine one can swim across the boundless ocean. But while my mind has understood, alas, my heart has not understood. Though but a dwarf, it still would strive to make a captive of the moon. Here you see, the mother is given, the concept of mother is given, it is beyond comprehension. It is that who can understand Kali, because all the six systems, Nayo, Vaisheshika, Purva Mimangsha, Uttar Mimangsha, all these philosophical texts which have described about the truth of the creation, they, they failed, they tried to fail to reveal the truth. Uh, that is the, it is called the inner self of the yogis. Yogis meditate on that, on that real self and then they discover the eternal joy. It is, and he has, she has created this universe out of her own. Sri Ramakrishna said about this in one place that it is like Kali is. The Master said the Divine Mother is, is Kali my Divine Mother? Is black? After the death, he creates the universe. After the destruction of the universe, my Divine Mother, the embodiment of Brahman, gathers together the seeds of the next creation. He starts here, Ramakrishna said, the Ganis who adhere to the non-dualistic philosophy of Vedanta say that the act of creation, preservation and destruction, the universe itself and all its living beings are the manifestation of the Shakti, the divine power known as Maya in the Vedanta philosophy. But we should not mix together. Two philosophies are different though. But the idea of what Ramakrishna tries to teach us, that the Ganis, they talk about the non-dualistic philosophy of Vedanta, say that this act, non-dualistic reality, there is no creation, no sustenance, no preservation. It is absolute. Who will say what it is? But when you come to creation, then it is all preservation and destruction. These are all manifestation of the Shakti, the Divine Father, Power. If you reason it out, you will realize that all these are illusory. In Vedanta, you say it is all illusory, momentary. As dream, Brahman alone is the reality and all else is unreal. Even this very Shakti, this very Shakti is unsubstantial like a dream. So when you come down, you see this universe as we are. We accept this world and this is the Maya according to Vedanta, illusory. But do you reason all your life unless you are established in Samadhi? You cannot go beyond the jurisdiction of Shakti. You may say, I am Brahman, I am Atman, I am beyond all this duality. But uh, when your stomach pain starts, then you go to doctor. <laughs> This is real, that reality comes back. So that's why bhaktas take a different step. Gyanis say it is maya, it is all temporary, it is not. But you can talk. When you experience, you have to rise in a plane where this entire creation, destruction, or preservation, everything will go into void. There is no existence of that. That means only in Samadhi you can do that. So Ramakrishna said, you may reason all your life, this dream, etc. Unless you are established in Samadhi, you cannot go beyond the jurisdiction of the Shakti. You are, we are all under the uh, jurisdiction of the Shakti, Adya Shakti. Even when you say, I am meditating, Ramakrishna said, or I am contemplating, Ramakrishna continues, still, you are moving in the realm of the Shakti and its power. 
So you are in the realm of the Shakti and power. You may say as Vedanta student that I am not the body. Yes, that's a good start to move on. But you cannot stay in that consciousness and your all will be intellectual. To cross that all intellect, you will have to reach there only. Thus, Brahman and Shakti are identical. If you accept the one, one must accept the other, like the fire and this burning. If you see the fire, you must recognize its power to burn. You cannot think of fire without the power to burn, nor you can think of the power to burn without the fire. You cannot conceive of the sun's rays without the sun, nor can you conceive the sun without its rays. So it is interdependent. They are not two. Now, the primordial power is ever at play. This whole world is a play. Play of whom? Play of the Shakti, of that divine power, primordial power. She is creating, Ramakrishna says, preserving and destroying in play. It is, there is no meaning, there is no purpose. We do everything with our meaning and purpose, no? We don't move one inch without there is a motive, there is a need, there is a purpose, no? So, but mother does, why she does that? Well, there is no reason and rhyme. She is creating the power, this power, this power, Ramakrishna said, this power is called Kali. Kali is verily Brahman and Brahman is verily Kali. It is one and the same reality. When you think of it as inactive, that is to say, not engaged in the acts of creation, preservation, destruction, then we call it Brahman. But when it engages in these activities, then we call it Kali or Shakti. The reality is one and the same. The difference is in the name and form. So Sri Ramakrishna didn't make it separate. It is reconciled. And the Bhakta, the devotees, that's why they take this world not as hallucination. They take it as the play of the mother. And because of the play of mother, so they cry and pray to mother for its redemption. And Ramakrishna was talking to Keshav and others. Then we find that Sri Ramakrishna was asked, Man, Ram, Keshav said, how many ways of Kali or the Divine Mother is there who sports in the world? Then Sri Ramakrishna started saying, oh, she plays in different ways. It is she alone who is known as Mahakali, Nitya Kali, etc., etc. Several names, they are mentioned in the Tantra philosophy. When there are neither the creation, nor the sun, the moon, the planets, and earth, and when darkness was enveloped in darkness, then the mother, the formless one, Mahakali, the great power, was one with Mahakala, the Absolute. So it is so clear in Sri Ramakrishna's words that it seems so easy. But the whole world is fighting with these philosophies about this, this reality and that reality. But what a unique way Sri Ramakrishna said that this is the play of the Mahakali and Nitya Kali or Mahakali they call. It is in the Tantra philosophy. And when there is neither the creation, suppose as time comes when there is no creation and there is no sun, no moon, no planets, no stars, no earth, and darkness prevails. Here comes the question of darkness. When this creation just goes into void, then what will, what will you say? It is a, it is a darkness uh, from our perspective. The, all this language is from our perspective to understand. So he's saying, we see that darkness. Therefore we symbolically worship mother as the black, complexion-wise black. And then Sri Ramakrishna says, after the destruction of the universe at the end of the great cycle, the Divine Mother gardeners the seeds for the next creation. She is like the elderly mistress of the house who has hotspot pot in which she keeps different articles for household use. No? So that is the way, again the Mother collects all this. Because Brahman does not do anything. You cannot say that Brahman is doing anything. But it is all mothers doing. 
So mother keeps all this into the womb and then again releases and a seed form. Like you can easily understand when we go to sleep every night, eh? all our experiences, where does it go? It goes withdrawn as it were in your sleep state. No? Does it vanish? No. But when you go to sleep, do you see light? A dream, up to dream you can see some something. But when you go to sleep, then what do you see? It's all dark. And you do not know also of dark. That's why you came out, you say, I do not know. But beyond that is what? Beyond that is the light of the self. No? According to Vedanta. So here also. As a bhakta now, look at that. You are looking at the creation. Creation is merging into the subtle form. Going to the mother divine, who we worship in a gross form, in the mother Kali's form. But when it goes back to the subtle, and subtle going to the causal, then there is nothing. It appears to be dark. And beyond that, just a little difference is there. In Vedanta called the layer of ignorance, no? Only this much one veil. Drop it and you see. That is, then is Brahman. It becomes Brahman. So after destruction of the universe, Mother then collects all these things. After the creation of the power dwells in the universe in itself. She brings forth this phenomenal world and then pervades it. The Vedas, Ramakrishna said this is a wonderful idea. We can think about that. In the Vedas, creation is likened to the spider and its web. The spider brings the web out of itself and then remains in it. God is the container of the universe and also what is contained in it. It's a good, beautiful idea. In the, in the Mundaka Upanishad, it has been said that as the wave comes out of the spider and is withdrawn, as plants grow from the soil, and hairs from the body of man, so springs the universe from the eternal Brahman. Ramakrishna is mentioning that, but in the Mundaka Upanishad it says, Yatha urnanavi srijate grinnati cha Yatha prithibhyam oshadaya sambhavanti Yatha purushat Keshalomani Tatha Aksharat Shambhavoiti Iho Vishwam So it is said that the, as a wave, you see the beautiful wave the spider does. Who helps him to do the spider, this net? Do anyone go like our carpenters come with wood and uh, nail and machines and this and they do? Who, who does this beautiful net? A bird's nest, you can say he collects this thing, that thing from here and there. But the web, the spider, it creates house of its own. But the spider is not doing anything, sitting somewhere. You don't see this web, beautiful net. This world is beautiful. Its charms are there, sometimes frightening though. But still, if you take one part, you will have to take the other part. Uh, when they create the beautiful wave, as if some artistic mind is working there. How they connect with this and that and this and that? Eh? This tiny, where is the mind? Where is working? Who is working through that? It's a deep subject to think about. And Upanishadic rishis have found that, you know, there is no other agency but the wave itself, the spider itself is creating the wave out of its own. And also important point you'll notice that the spider can withdraw that if at the immediate point you give a strike somewhere then she can go and it can go and withdraw it but god can do it anytime that is the beauty of god <laughs> he has given some example in the world look at that how from me everything comes and i create everything in the upanishad in the um, the suktas, Vedic suktas, Ahang Rastri, Shangamani, Bashunang, Chikitasi, 
There she says, I create the universe. I rule the world. I do the bushes and control everything. That's it. She is the power. Tremendous power, Shakti. Where did it come from? I don't take anyone's power. In the Chondi there is a place when the Asura uh, started uh, multiplying himself and he started fighting. Then mother uh, asked her attendant powers to manifest and fight with the demon. And then the demon said, oh, you are fighting with so many. Why not do it alone with me? Okay. Then mother said, okay, let me, give me a little time. And then she started fighting alone. And, then, and there she declared very wonderfully, I am the only reality in the world. Who else is there in me? Huh? So that is the only reality as mother. And that mother is like, but how Vedanta con, con, comes there, Vedanta and Tantra can be uh, just met together. Here, next verse it says, Tapasachiyati Brahma Tato Annam Vijayati Annat Prano Manashatyam Loka Karma Suchamritam. This is Mundaka Upanishad 1 1.8. What it means that Brahman, here they are saying, the Absolute. You call the absolute whose shakti that Brahman willed that it should be so. That means this I will be many like that. And brought forth out of himself the same spider from himself or herself you can say. The material cause of the universe. The thread. The material cause who? It comes from that same spider. It, she brought the material things from out of her own. And then, cause of the universe, uh, from the, that came the primal energy. And from that primal energy came the mind. And from mind to the subtle elements, five elements, from the subtle elements to the gross and the many worlds. And from the acts performed by beings in the many worlds, the chain of cause and effect has been created and the reward and punishment of works are going on. So it is by the will of that that Upanishad says, I was alone, I will be many. That's a wish. Like the spider wishes to have a wave and when he plans, he starts working. It does not depend on anyone. So similarly, that Brahman, the Absolute, when wants to play, that's why Ramakrishna said, it's play. You cannot say why, what. It is play. Play of the Divine. And when it comes to the play, then comes this, this creation, sustenance, maintenance. And in that creation, sustenance and maintenance, all our joys and sufferings, our sin, our love, our hatred, our anger, our frustration, all our emotions and every inch by inch, day by day, uh, growing and dying, everything is happening in that cosmic desire. But it is not to the wave and the spider, they are the one manifestation in the same reality, in a manifested form or unmanifested form. So, Sri Ramakrishna has mentioned, the spider brings the wave out of itself and then remains in it. God is the container of the universe and also what is contained in it. Is Kali, my Divine Mother, a black complexion? Ramakrishna says, she appears black because she is viewed from a distance. Here is the explanation Sri Ramakrishna gives. It's a beautiful idea. Uh, from a distance we see things. Suppose you have, you have, the, uh, you have some experience when you uh, are in the plane during night time and crossing Atlantic or Pacific Ocean. How do you see the entire Pacific? It's all black, particularly at the night. Uh, it is totally black. But is really the ocean black? Dark? You go close, then what will you find? Closer and closer and closer. And take the water in your hand. See, what color is this? So this is a very important point. We start our worship from a distance. We start God as further away. 
That's why mother worship to bring her clothes. But still, when I start my journey, I see her at a distance. And that's why he says, when you just bring her clothes, your heart, she illumines your heart. So, is Kali, my divine mother, of a black complexion? She appears black because she is viewed from a distance. But when intimately known, Ramakrishna's words are very beautiful, when intimately known, when you come and touch the ocean water and take it in your palm and check it, is it dark or is it what? So it is, but when intimately known, she is no longer such. The sky appears blue. We all say it is blue sky. But we all know there is no color. There is no blue color, color in this. Somebody has spread now. Uh, and it will go away sometime. It is not like that. It is distance which makes us see, feel like that. It is like a dome. All of us cannot deny that the sky is like a dome. Is the sky like a dome? All our perception. So Sri Ramakrishna said, she appears black because she is viewed from a distance, but when intimately known, she is no longer so. The sky appears blue at a distance. But look, but look, look at it close by and you will find that it has no colors. The water of the ocean looks blue at a distance. But when you go near and take it in your hand, you find that it is colorless. And then the master became intoxicated with divine love and sang. And what happens when this song goes on? Sri Ramakrishna goes into deep ecstasy. This is the beauty. We are talking because he has the experience when this type of music or words come and he listens to that, it's inspiration, he goes shoot up into that which is this form and the formless, that beyond. So going from this, it goes up. Bondage and liberation <coughs> are both hard making. By her maya, worldly people become entangled in lust and go greed. And again, through her grace, they attain their liberation. She is called the savior and the remover of the bondage that binds one to the world. <coughs> the Master continued to say, the Divine Mother is always playful and sportive. This universe is her play. She is self-willed and must always have her own way. She is full of bliss. She gives freedom to one out of hundred thousands. It is her play. Then the devotee asked, Sir, she can give freedom to all. Why then has she kept us bound to the world? It's a natural question. If she can give us and we are her children, so why she has put us into trouble? And then no response. To, so Ramakrishna said, Oh, that is her will. She wants to continue playing with her created beings in a game of hide and seek. The running about soon stops if in the beginning all the players touch the granny. If all touch her, then how can the game go on? That, is, that displeases her. Her pleasure is in continuing the game. Therefore, the poet says, out of hundreds of thousands of kites, at best not one or two break free. And thus thou dost laugh and clap thy hands, O mother, watching them. So mother wants that we should play. Uh, that is her wish. You may say, why? Well, it is, who can say why she wishes like that? Why our earthly mother does not take the baby in her lap all the time and put some toys and some so many things to delude the baby. 
with other things which are not uh, the real thing behind. So that's why Sri Ramakrishna became very compassionate and said that mother, he sang a song, the mother, this is my grief, that solely grieves my heart, that even with thee for mother, and thou, I am wide awake, though I am wide awake, there should be robbery, robbery in my house. Many and many a time I vow to call on thee, yet when the time for prayer comes round, I have forgotten. It happens with us every day, no? We'll, Rubindar Tagore has a song. Prabhate uh, Uthiya. In the early morning, I think, Oh Lord, I will start my journey by saluting you. And noon time I shall do this. Right afternoon I shall do this. Afternoon that. And then the, at the end of the day we find that we have forgotten you. <laughs> so this is the point. That mother's play going on and that is the Bhakti school teaches us that. Now, we have to, what we can take in our spiritual life is that this worshipping the divine in the form of mother is a journey. Because Sri Ramakrishna said in one place that we cannot think of infinity. We cannot think of the absolute all the time. It is so limited because we, our power is so limited. So what we have to do? We have to go through this worship of the different forms of symbols. And out of that symbol, mother symbol is the best. Because it is loving. We all need some care. We need some protection. No? Your money, your wealth, everything is there. But that does not give you so much strength and power when we know that the Divine Mother is behind us and protecting us. A child it feels more protective, most protective when? When the child or the baby is in the mother's lap, is it not? It's free from, there may be bombing going on, there may be killing going on, but a baby is very free and safe when in the mother's womb. So it is the point that it is mother worship is that's why we do. Sri Ramakrishna was Divine Mother's worshipper and she has give, given us a tradition that this is the way to reach that Absolute through this worship of Mother with this type of spirit that not to understand Mother but to pray and be like a child and cry as Sri Ramakrishna taught us. And her, her form will reveal gradually what she is by our sincere practice. But it is, comes out of her grace. Though, so, Sri Ramakrishna gives us that is, yes, this can give you intoxication. This can give you real joy when one can sing this type of thoughts through the music or through these ideas and one can think that mother has become everything. So who you see as your enemy? Who is she your friend? It is the mother. It is the mother in this costume or mother in that costume. What a transformation it can bring. And also this worshipping the Divine Mother is a philosophy and it is a age-old tradition. If one really sincerely follows that tradition, the inner joy and that bliss and that light that will come up, that in, in the deep, dense darkness, then the Mother formless beauty will shine. Therefore, that is the reason the yogis for ages together meditate on the Mother and in the dark mountain caves. No? So, as a result, in the boundless, in the lap of boundless dark, that on Maha Nirvana's waves are, are, are born, are born, all the waves are coming of creation through this Mahamaya's grace. And peace flows and serene and inexhaustible. So, that's why it is the, it is the only sadhana should be to keep mother in the heart and to meditate on that and let her unfold her glory to us. Sri Ramakrishna was sitting one day, Dr. Sarkar came 
and Noreen was sitting and Noreen sang this song in the deepest darkness, O oh Mother, thy formless beauty eh, sparkles. And, that, and, and listening to that song when it was sung, Dr. Sarkar was a very great scientist, you can say, and doctor also. He, he said that this song is very dangerous for Sri Ramakrishna because he will go to Samadhi. And if he goes to Samadhi in his health condition, it will be dangerous. Now, and, and he may go to Samadhi. Then the master singing, he listening to this song, uh, he went, master had partially lost consciousness of the outer world. And being very humble, with folded palm, Sri Ramakrishna said, no, no, why should I go to Samadhi? And hardly had he spoken these words when he went into deep ecstasy. His body became motionless, his eyes fixed, his tongue speechless. He sat there like a statue cut in stone, completely unconscious of the outer world. Torn inward was his mind, ego and all other organs of perception. So that is the thing real mother, you see, black mother can do, black magic. <laughs> This is the black magic of Divine Mother, which can take us to that illumination, that intoxication. In another place we find that, that he's talking about this, this song, and M says, that song is beautiful. Master said, you are right. That song has a deep meaning. A part of my mind is, is still drawn to it. Meditation in darkness that is prescribed in this song. So, so is mother black? Still remains unsolved. <laughs> it is only by spiritual practice one can say how mother is. Thank you. Om Tang Stri Tvang Pumanashi Tvang Kumara Yutava Kumari Tvang jirno dande na panchasi, tvang yato bhavasi vishyato mukha. Om shanti, shanti, shanti hi. Thou art the woman, thou art the man. Thou art the young boy and young girl. Thou art the old man tottering on his cane. Thou hast taken birth in manifold forms. Om peace, peace. Peace be unto us all.